welcome to the American Garage. Hi, welcome back to the American Garage. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. and We're going to talk about a past project that I had done before the American Garage started. Today, we're going to talk about restoring and restringing a piano. Now, if you want to restore a piano, I'll give you the tips and pointers of what needs to be done along the way. But maybe you're a piano owner and you're not really interested in restoring a piano. It might be good to have a few of these helpful hints as well so that you can tell whether or not your piano repairman and your tuner are doing the job correctly. So let's talk about restoring and restringing a piano. As we learn about piano restringing and restoration, these are the topics we're going to cover today. First of all, disassembly and unstringing of the piano. Then we're going to talk about inspecting a piano and we're going to focus on three main areas. Focus on the harp, the soundboard, and the pin block. After that, we're going to talk about how to go about restringing the piano and repinning the piano. Okay, now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to disassemble the piano. First, we remove the music tray. Okay, now underneath the piano, on the front, there's some big screws that we're going to use a fat screwdriver for, and some little ones up here that hold the wood on the front, and the two blocks at the end, and the key cover. We're going to take these screws out, and then all this will come out. With the four little screws off the bottom, uh, the faceplate for the keyboard comes off. The two big fat screws hold the wood blocks at the ends of the keyboard in place. With all the screws re removed, now we can take the block ends and the keyboard cover out at the same time. Now, it's as simple as that, the keyboard is ready to come out. What we'll do is we'll take the keyboard out with the action and we'll set it aside someplace safe where it won't get damaged. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to take the dampers out. These dampers will be in the way of the strings. We don't want to mess them up. So we're going to remove them and then we're going to stick them and a piece of cardboard. We're going to number them because it's important that we don't mess up the order. So the first thing is we use our small screwdriver and there's a little screw underneath holding each one in place. We'll very gently loosen the screw and take the damper out. Just like that. Now we'll take this, and we'll put it in a piece of cardboard, and we'll put a number on it. Okay, now the next thing is I want to show you some of the special tools that we're going to need now. It's going to take a little more than a couple of screwdrivers and wrenches to take a piano apart, and there's some very specialized tools, which let me show you. Now the first thing is you also want to make sure you get yourself a good guide. And this book, A Guide to Restringing by John W. Travis, has been an excellent resource. And if you decide that you want to restore a piano, you need to get a copy of this book. Now of course for tuning, and we're not going to be tuning just yet, but we are going to be detuning the piano, we have to have a special tuning wrench. This wrench is made to fit specifically on your tuning pins. Now tuning pins, if you try to, to do this with any other kind of wrench, you're going to mess these things up. 
Along with our tuning wrench, we have a couple of, or muters. We use these to mute the strings that we're not tuning at the moment. Now, when we're taking it apart and detuning, we won't need these, but we will need them uh, when we put the new strings in. Now, there are some uh, tools that are specific to uh, putting strings in a piano. And we've got a, a hook, we've got a string stretcher, we have this handy little tool that helps us to get our wire in place. Now what it's used for, notice that it has three prongs on this side so that you can make sure that all of your wires are correctly spaced. We also have this, a winding tool. This has been an invaluable tool. And this is a tool that's used for putting the wire on and getting that two and a half turns exactly and winding the, uh, the wire around exactly. Now this is a lubricant that's used on the bridges. You'll notice that there's, there's uh, a black ridge on top of the, the wooden bridges towards the back of the piano. And this is the lubricant that is uh, made specifically for that. Now, if you don't already have a mic, you might want to get one. And I've got this one that has a little, little digital readout. Now, what this is handy for is to measure the size of the strings. Because when you pull the old strings off, we're not just going to willy-nilly pull them off. We're going to take a measurement and make note of those measurements as we go along. So I bought a special size from the same people that I bought the pins from. A special size drill bit specifically for drilling holes for the pins and a reamer. Now we also use this in the drill. Uh, we're going to use a drill press and not a hand drill. Okay. Now what this does is it cleans the hole afterwards because if you don't have clean holes when you drill holes into the pin block what's going to happen is that there might be a little piece of, uh, of sawdust in there and when we hammer the the pins in uh, if that little piece is in there it might get stuck and then it, later on in the piano's life it might slip a little bit because there's that piece in there okay so we want to make sure we use the reamer and clean all the holes out after we drill them now we don't have a lot of real exotic things but uh, spend a little extra money and get the tools that are specific to pianos and keep a little toolbox and what I've done is I made a toolbox specifically for piano repairs. Now, when you unstring a piano uh, to take the tension off because we're going to replace all the strings, we want to detune it. Now, keep in mind that there's about 40,000 pounds of pressure on these strings right now. So we don't want to just do that willy-nilly. There's a special procedure to go by. So, I get my tuning wrench and I will notice, I want you to notice that each string, each note has three strings to it, three wires. And you can see one, two, three, one, two, three, and they're kind of alternating back and forth, but you can see that they're in rows of three. Now, what we're going to do is first we're going to start with the treble strings, which are the thin wires, and they start right here, and we're going to detune only a half a turn on each of the front ones. Next, we're going to detune the third wire in back. After we do that, turning only half a turn, then we'll be left with only the middle string. And we'll do the same thing on there. Once we get all of these detuned one half of a turn, We'll then go to the base and we'll do the same thing. Now on the base, there's not three 
uh, strings on every note. Uh, some of them have two, and some of them only have one at the lowest notes. Uh, but we first we'll do this side to a half a turn. We'll come down here a half a turn. Then we'll come back up here and repeat the whole procedure. A half a turn, half a turn, until we get everything loose. Here's a picture of how it looked after the piano was completely detuned. Let's talk about inspection. Now, I didn't just wake up one morning and decide, let's restring a piano. What I did is I found this piano, and it, w it wouldn't stay in tune, and so I got a great deal on it. And I figured there's got to be some way that we can fix this piano. So I dug into it, and learned about pianos, and found out what was wrong with this one. So, let's take a, a moment and let's look at all the aspects that you need to uh, look at when you're inspecting a piano to, to see what's wrong with it. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do to inspect a piano is to tune it. Now, if you are not a piano tuner, but you want to restore a piano, well, you're going to need to learn a little bit about tuning. And in order to inspect the piano, you don't need to be really good at tuning it at first, okay? Because what we're looking for is, are there any strings that will not stay tuned? So, um, get yourself uh, a tuning wrench and the, the string muters, like uh, I had showed earlier. You can get yourself a program for a tablet or you can get programs for computers as well to help you tune a piano. So, uh, if you'd like, we can do a separate video on how to tune a piano. Now, um, once we tune the piano, we let it set for a day, and then we see which strings uh, will not stay in tune. Now, if a piano will not stay in tune, certain strings, certain notes, then we know we have a problem in that area. Now, if it's just one or two in uh, different locations, then there's probably just one little pin loose. But if you've got a whole section that's loose, like there was on this piano, then you have a deeper problem. Now, when I had tuned this piano, there was like three sections that would not tune. Not just one or two notes, but a whole clump of notes. This is the old pin block. Now this was the culprit and the main reason that we had to restring the whole piano. Do You see these big splotches right here? There's one right here, there's another one right here, and there's a third one down here. Well, what had happened in this piano's 100 plus years of life is along the way somebody set drinks on the piano and they spilled the drinks into the piano and see that the, this splotch is where the drinks were spilled so this is where it would not tune anymore right here and right here and down here so this pin block is no good so uh, I had to remove it and make a brand new one but how I was able to identify it was that these areas wouldn't tune okay so now we know we've got a bad pin block. So we know that's going to have to come out. What else is wrong with the piano? Okay, now once the, uh, the piano has been detuned and all the strings are loose, we don't want to take them out just yet. The next part of our inspection is going to be to take a measurement using our mic of the, the size of each string. We'll make a note of them as we take them off the piano. This is very important. One of the other problems that this piano had, and you may find it on other pianos as well, is sometimes the string will break. And when they break, they have to be replaced with the same size string. Now, sometimes that doesn't end up happening. Uh, so, one of the other problems I discovered while trying to tune the piano initially was that uh, certain notes wouldn't sound right, even though they would hold their tune. And the problem was, each note has three wires on it, three strings. Now, if those three wires are not all the same size, 
wire, then that note will never tune properly. And it will always sound a little bit funny. So that had happened on this piano as well. So, so far we identified two problems we had with this piano. One, the pin block was bad. And two, we had about three or four instances where the wrong size string was on the wrong note. So, uh, whenever you have one note with two different size strings, it will never tune right. The next thing was, what is the shape of the soundboard? What is the shape of the bridges? So let's, let's have a look at those real quick. Okay, now we need to get underneath the piano and inspect the soundboard. What we're looking for when we look at the bottom of the soundboard is we notice that there's these wooden ribs on the bottom of the soundboard going opposite of the grain of the wood. That's what we want to inspect. Now what we're looking for is for places where that has separated. Now it's a good sign on this piano that none of the ribs had separated from the soundboard itself. Now you may notice from the top that there will be cracks sometimes along the grain of the wood. Those aren't necessarily bad and it's not going to ruin the sound of your piano. But what is going to be a pass-fail is if the ribs are not secure to the soundboard. If that happens, then we've got a whole nother set of problems. Okay, in this particular case, we were okay. So we didn't have to touch the soundboard itself. But now we know that it's good and we can move forward with the project because it would be a bad thing to restring the piano and then discover later on that the soundboard was bad. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to inspect are the bridges. Now the bridges are made of wood and they're attached to the soundboard. So just like the ribs on the bottom, we want to make sure that there's no separation with the soundboard and we also want to inspect to see if they're damaged or cracked, have splits or cracks going through them. That would uh, be an indication that we need to replace the bridge. We were lucky on this one and the bridges were in excellent condition. Now, when we get everything removed and we take the harp out of the piano, we're going to also inspect the harp for cracks. Now we've identified everything that was wrong with the piano. Luckily, our soundboard, our harp, and our bridges were in great shape. But what we did have was that we were uh, missing some strings, the pin block was bad, and some of the strings were the wrong size and in the wrong place. We made a list of all of our strings. We numbered them, measured them, and categorized them, and told which note they were on so that when it's time to go back together, we know exactly what size string goes where. Okay, so now that we're prepared to detune the piano, before we do so, let's inspect the strings and make note of where everything is. Now, as you can see in these pictures where we're detuning the piano, the strings are all loose, and now we're going to prepare to uh, take them out. Before we do, we're going to measure each one as we have mentioned earlier. Now we've got all the, the, the strings out of the piano and we're ready to remove the harp. Now first what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take all the fasteners, all the screws and uh, different fasteners that are holding the harp down out of the piano and we're going to catalog them in this piece of cardboard. Now it's the same thing with the key dampers. We're going to use a piece of cardboard to catalog those as well and set them aside along with the, the keyboard. Now that those pieces are out and set aside, we can start to remove the harp. Now, below the harp is the pin block. And the pin block comes out next. You can see all those black spots that we had mentioned earlier that show where the pin block went bad. Now we have the piano empty. 
let's have a good look at it. It's really dirty and grungy, and the varnish is not in very good shape. Now, if you're going to restore a piano, you want to make sure that you can get a decal for it to put back on the, the soundboard after you revarnish your soundboard. Now, in my case, I couldn't find mine because my piano was too old. So, I took a nice, clear, sharp photograph of the decal so I could have a new one made. Now, this is what the bridges looked like before uh, we started scraping and sanding. And the rest of the soundboard as well. The next step is to scrape all the var old varnish off. If you're very careful and use a, a nice scraper, you can scrape the varnish off of the soundboard carefully. Do not use any chemical paint strippers or varnish removers. The soundboard is a sensitive piece of equipment and we don't want to damage it with any kind of liquids. So you have to remove it mechanically. Now after we finish scraping the soundboard, we're going to sand it. Now my recommendation is that you use 180 grit sandpaper. Uh, no coarser than that. Because the, uh, the soundboard, if we sand it with coarser sandpaper, we may change the shape of the soundboard. And even though it may look flat, it has a shape to it that they had cut into it when they made it. So let's not disturb that and use as light of a sanding as we can. Now that it is scraped and sanded, we revarnished. We put new bridge paint, that lubricant uh, bridge paint, on top of the bridges. And we put our new soundboard decal in there. And this is what it looks like. I did take the liberty of putting my own name and the date of the restoration in the new decal. Now, let's look at how we refit the pin block to the harp. Once you have the harp out, when we make a new pin block, we've got to cut it to fit exactly against the edge of the harp. So, what we're doing here is we're fitting it to make sure it fits exactly. Now, a little trick that I picked up along the way was that you can use a little bit of thickened epoxy to fill any gaps there might be on the forward edge between the pin block and the harp because you want that uh, that connection to be tight and you, you don't want to have any gaps in there. You can see how I used some saran wrap to make sure that I did not glue the pin block to the harp. After that I painted the harp, found a nice gold finish to put on it. With the harp temporarily installed and the pin block temporarily installed, we mark the holes for the pins. Next, we take it back apart and we take the pin block out and we take it to the, the wood shop and we're going to drill the holes and ream them out as well for each of the pins. These holes must be drilled precisely, so drill them with a drill press. You may notice that there's a little bit of an angle to the pins, so the holes have to be drilled at an angle. If I'm remembering correctly, it was about five degrees. So what I did was I set up my drill press with a table that was set at the angle that I needed so that all the holes would be at the exact right angle and all of them would match exactly. Now you can see on the pin block all the little dimples that we had made when we had marked the holes uh, for the pin block. And these dimples make it easy for us to drill holes in the exact right place. We had marked the holes with our special uh, punch that came with our special tools for piano installation. It fits exactly in the holes of the harp and centers the holes exactly. Now that we have drilled all of our holes in the pin block, everything is ready to be reinstalled. First, we'll put the pin block back in the piano with all of its holes drilled, and then we'll put our harp back in, and now we refasten everything. There's something I want to mention to you at this point. When I had taken the harp out of the piano, I marked its location exactly so I could get it precisely back in the same location. This is important. 
Now also, when I had taken all the fasteners out, and you saw how I cataloged them, I got brand new ones because the old ones were all rusty and painted on and uh, they just looked terrible. So I got brand new nickel plated ones to put in for the new installation. Now the piano is ready for its restringing. Before we install the pins, we have these little spacers that we're going to install with our, our special punch. Here you can see I've got new pins, the strings, parts laid out, and my notes for all of the, the different string sizes and where they go. Note also that uh, I've got some pieces of wood underneath the, the pin block on the keyboard tray uh, that will support the pin block as I'm hammering the new pin pins into the pin block. This is very important. You need to make sure that you have support underneath the pin block when you uh, insert the new pins because if you don't you could damage your brand new pin block and you can damage the piano as well. So make sure that you have support under there. It's very critical. And now we are set to put our strings in. First we get the first one done and we work our way down the treble. Now you can see here I, where I'm stopping here uh, I am changing size of the strings. Now let me mention something to you about that right now. So what I want you to know right now is that the strings are all different sizes in different locations. They go from a small size up at the tr top of the treble and they get increasingly larger as you go down. Now where you break the strings is very important. Because there are three strings on each note, uh, that's an odd number, so you this string is shared with the next note. So you cannot break the size of the string uh, except for every six strings. Okay? Otherwise you're going to have one note with two separate size strings and that's that one's going to sound bad. What I did because I didn't have a scale for all the strings on this piano because it was too old, I found an engineer who was uh, willing and able to uh, recreate a, uh, a string pattern, a scale, for this piano. In our book that we had mentioned earlier, A Guide to Restringing, they do have this, the different scales for different kinds of pianos. So you may find the scale of your piano in one of these books. I wasn't that fortunate. So the, the engineer uh, recalculated uh, the string size for me and told me where to break them uh, to the next size. Now where you break the size is going to uh, determine how good your piano sounds. The, the engineer that I had uh, create my scale was uh, a mechanical engineer and a musician and he knew exactly what he was doing. He had, he had done this uh, for a number of years. Okay, now we have all the treble wires in. Let's move to the bass wires. What you have to do when you need to put new bass strings in is you have to take the strings out of your piano and send them off to have new wires the exact same size made. Make sure that when you take them off the piano, you take them off in order and keep them numbered as well. The factory will make new wires and send them to you. Here you can see our new wires laid out and ready to install. Now all the wires are in and I want you to make note of the felt. As you go along when you are stringing the piano make sure you keep your felt as neat as possible because even though the strings are not tight once the strings are in you're not going to be able to move the felt. So you must make sure that it's even and in place as you go. Now here's a view of our pins close up. Now one of the things I want to point out to you is the height of the pins. Notice that there's a little bluing showing and our pins are rather tall. Now I did this on purpose because as the piano gets older uh, some of the pins may loosen a little. 
the solution for this for the piano tuner is to hammer them in a little bit so we want to leave our pins as tall as we can at the beginning so that during the piano's life and the life of these strings the different tuners that will come along will have enough room to hammer them down if necessary let's have a look at the completed job that i did restringing the piano At this point, the piano is completely restrung. Now we'll need to stretch those strings in and we'll probably tune it six or eight times. But now we can reassemble the piano, put the keys in, and then we'll get to the business of tuning the piano. Put the keyboard cover on and the end blocks and now we'll put the screws back in. I hope you enjoyed this episode and saw a little bit about what goes into restoring and restringing a piano. Thanks, and we'll see you next time right here on The American Garage.